I'm going to get to um, the next thing, which is my next sort of direction to look for is, is there some kind of symmetry here? Is there some symmetry that I can take advantage of? And the reason why I think of symmetry is not just because I know symmetry is a, is a thing, but look at these guys. You see these? Highly symmetrical, right? And all of these graphs that I've been looking at so far have had various kinds of symmetries, right? Well, the circle has an infinite number of axes of symmetry. The ellipse has two. The parabola has one, right? So you might think, uh-oh, am I losing my axis of symmetry? But the algebra kind of suggests that there would be some kind of symmetry. So the first thing I've done is intercepts. The second thing I'm going to do is search for some symmetry. So this is like, this is, uh, sorry, where have I written? Here. One, intercepts. Okay. Number two, I'm looking for some symmetry. Odd and even symmetry are the normal kinds of symmetry that I'm most familiar with. How would I go about determining whether, and by the way, I'm, I can't say function, can I? This is not a function. Um, it's pretty easy to see. It's just outputting some values and you will not get just one output for every input. For this relation, how would I go about finding odd or even symmetry? How would I do it? Can you take x minus x? Yeah, I want to, I need a definition for, like, this is, this is what would give me even symmetry, right? <coughs> and this is what would be uh, whoops, too many minus signs. Odd symmetry, right? So if I want this, what I need is everything as a function of x. Does that make sense? I want things as a function of x. This is not written as a function of x, partly because it's not a function, okay? But it's not written in terms of x at all. All the x and y's are just kind of jumbled together. So let's rearrange this thing, okay? Let's go, we'll make y the subject, right? I'm gonna get x, sorry, minus y squared on 12, and I'll kick over that x squared on 4 over this way. How does that look? You going okay? Now, to make y the subject, I need to get rid of these two constants here, the minus 1 and the 12, right, or the minus a 12. Okay. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative, negative 12. Is that okay? That'll make y squared the subject. So that's going to give me hmm, negative 12 plus 3x squared. Are you happy with that? What's going through? One more step. I'll kind of do two things at once. I'll take the square root of both sides, but I'm going to get a plus or minus, because there are two solutions, aren't there? Right? While I'm at it, I might as well change the order of this so it looks a little more friendly. That's what I've got. OK, now, pause for a moment. Even though I've written y equals, this is an expression over here. That changes, right? It's in terms of x. So therefore, now I have it in this kind of form. Do I observe any kind of symmetry? Yes. You bet I do, right? Look at this, okay? If I put in an x value, I'm going to get, you know, say put in x equals 1, right? It gets squared. So if you put in negative 1, you're going to get the same value back. I lose that sign, right? So therefore, if I put in x equals 1, I would get, well, x equals 1 is a bad idea because I'm, um, I'm not going to be able to evaluate that. It's a little bit. Uh, let's try x equals 7. How about x equals 2? 4. I think x equals 4 will give me a nice number, right? I'll use this in a second. If x equals 4, right, then y is going to equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 times 16. 3 times 48 minus 12. Oh, that's kind of handy. Right? So this is 36. So I'm getting this. right? But if I try x equals negative 4, I don't even need to go to the effort, do I? Right? Because as soon as you put it in here, it's going to behave exactly the way 4 did, because it gets squared out. Does that make sense? So this is the clue I was looking at before. I think there might be symmetry here. And sure enough, so when x equals negative 4, y again will equal plus or minus 6. Okay? Now, I'm noticing a couple of interesting things here. Right? The first thing is I have identified even symmetry. That's good. So if I have one half over here, I'm going to get the same half over here. Okay? That's good. But just by the values that I tested, do you notice even symmetry, which is a horizontal thing, right? It means I can reflect horizontally. Even symmetry isn't the only thing that has emerged. Do you notice this? Right? Look, it's plus or minus 6. Plus or minus 6. If I put other values in here, I'm always going to get plus or minus, plus or minus whatever, right? So that means there is not just horizontal symmetry. There is also vertical symmetry. Okay? Now, we don't have a fancy name for that, like even and odd symmetry. But I'm just going to note that, right? I have symmetry which I really should say is reflective symmetry, across the x-axis, that's vertical, 
and across the y-axis. Okay? Now, I'm not going to bother going to the effort of doing it algebraically, but I could have noticed that without just subbing in values. Because right? you see this process we went through to get y in terms of x? I could have done it in reverse. I could have gotten x in terms of y, and I would have observed exactly the same thing. I would have had a, um, a y squared term underneath the square root. It's going to have the same kind of, doesn't matter what sign you put in, you'll get the same thing out. Yeah. All right, so I've got some symmetry. What else might be useful to me? Okay, I will get to the extremities, but that's a bit, it's a bit harder. It takes a bit more work. Before I get to there, um, I should notice when you have a look at here, right? I just observe symmetry. So see how I've got a, a focus here? Well, if the thing's symmetrical, I guess that means it'll have a focus over there too, right? And we already have encountered this kind of thing with the ellipse, right? The ellipse was symmetrical. This shape is going to be symmetrical. So it's going to have two foci, and I guess that means it's also going to have two directrices. Right. So I'll call this D and D dash and S and S dash. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at, now which would be the most helpful line? Oh yeah, okay, I'm going to go with this one. What I'm trying to do is constantly push on algebra and see what kind of geometric insights it can give me. All right? Now as soon as I see that, I'll just write it in these terms. y squared equals 3x squared minus 12. Remembering that even though we know about complex numbers, I'm only dealing on in the Cartesian plane, so it's real and real, right? That means certain things are true about y squared, which are also true of 3x squared minus 12, because they're the same thing, right? If I'm only in the real numbers, that means I know the smallest y squared can possibly be, the smallest it can be, because y is a real number, is zero. Do you agree with that? The only way to get y squared to be negative is to pump some complex numbers in there, and I'm kind of a bit off limits from that right now. So being that y squared must be positive, that means that 3x squared minus 12 must be positive. I'm okay with zero. <coughs> I can square to get zero, that's all right. What's this going to tell me? What am I going to get out of this? Can we simplify a little bit? What would you like me to do? I guess I'll, um, I'll, I actually am going to avoid taking things to the other side. We'll see why in a second. I think dividing would be simple. That's good. Oh, right? yeah. And then now, I, that's, that's the difference of squares, so I'm going to factorize that. Now, what does this represent? This is a parabola. Parabola. It's got roots at negative 2 and 2. And I want to know where is it positive. It's Can you tell me where? Yeah, it's on the outside, isn't it? This is a concave up parabola. Okay? So therefore, I'm getting uh, less than negative 2, or it's greater than 2. What does this represent? What is this? We have a name for this. It starts with a D. This is the domain, right? Remember I said, look, y squared has to be positive. This is the only place it exists. And this is what follows if I draw my conclusion. So now I know about the domain. Okay. So remember we've got the intercepts, negative 2 and 2. I can't go inside here. I have to say outside. Does that make sense? That's what this domain tells me. 